All right, let's practice a little bit and let's write some electron configurations out here. So let's do. Um, how about let's do selenium? Let's go over here. We'll do a couple. We'll do selenium. So if I give you uh, element 34 and I say write the electron configuration, you're going to be writing the summaries. So the first thing you do is run your finger across the periodic table. Start in row 1, and when you get to the end of a sublevel, you write down what you've got there. So 1s, 2. Then you go to the next row. We get to the end of this sublevel, we write down what we have. 2s, 2. Then we keep going, get to the next sublevel, which is going to be 2p, and then we write down 6. We're not at 34 yet, we're still going. So now we hit 3s2, keep going, and now we hit the aluminum through argon, that's 3p6, and then this is what I showed you before, we hit those guys, that's 4s2, then there's nothing, 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 and I purposely chose this particular periodic table to show you that the this is where the f block belongs. Usually that f block is pulled out and put underneath the d's, and then these P s's are pulled right next to the d block. Um, that's probably the periodic table that you have that you're looking at if you're looking at your own. Um, but this makes things a little bit easier for you to visualize. In any case, uh, so where are we? 4s, then we get over, all the way over here, and now we hit the d's for the very first time. Remember, we're on our way over here to element 34, to selenium. So we've got to pass through the d's. The only thing you need to remember is that when you see the d's, they're always one behind. So it's 3d10, and then we get to the p block, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we end in... Uh, 4, P, 4. And it's 4 because it's in the fourth row. Helium's row 1, period 1, period 2, period 3, period 4. So it's 4, P, 4. And if I want to take this a step further and look at the valence electrons, because they're going to be, become the really important electrons that we're worried about, we look at the highest energy level, not sublevel. I know that you learn D is a higher sublevel than S or P's, but 4 is a bigger energy level. So we have to add everything in that energy level, the outermost energy level. So we're going to actually always add S's and P's together. Sometimes you won't have any P's. Sometimes P equals zero. But you're always going to add S's and P's together. 2 plus 4 is 6. So selenium will have six valence electrons, which makes sense because it's in group 6. we got 1, 2 over there. Here's group 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you happen to look at a periodic table like this with the teens, just ignore the one in front and that number that you're left with will match up with valence electrons. How about let's do mercury, Hg. Mercury, which has got 80 electrons. Now, I don't want to keep track of 80 electrons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out first, let me just erase all this mess here. Um, I'm going to figure out first where it belongs on the periodic table and what it's going to end in. And then I'm going to worry about uh, where to stop. And then I just fill everything up till I get to that point. So I know the mercury is in the D block, so it's over here. So it's going to end in D, and it's actually the last one in the D block, so it's D10. And I just have to figure out which D10. So I know that the Ds are always one behind. So if this is row 4, then that means this is 3D, this is 4D, this must be 5D. So I'm going to say that it ends in 5D10. So that's my goal. I want to get to 5D10. What I'm going to do in the meantime is, just like I did before, run my finger across through the periodic table. Every time I get to the end of a sublevel, I write down the total that's in that section. So first thing I do is hit hydrogen and helium. That's 1S2. Then I go to the next row, 2S2. Then I go up here to boron over to neon. That's 2P6. Then I'm back in the third row. 3s2, then I go to this row, or this section, 3p6, still going. Potassium and calcium, there's my 4s2, then I hit the d's for the first time. This is 3d, 1 through 10. So I write 3d, 10, then I'm back up to the rules. I'm in the fourth row of the periodic table, fourth period, so I write down 4p, remember s's and p's match whatever row you got, 4p6. Then we keep going, 5s2, I'm going to go down here, 5s2, then nothing, nothing, nothing until I get to 4d, 4d, 1 through 10, then after 4d, 1 through 10, I get back up to the regular rules, this is 5, 
fifth row, so it's 5p6. Still going. 6s2. Now I hit the f's. F's are going to be 2 behind. So remember that. H-I-N-D. Uh, D's are always 1 behind. F's are always 2 behind. So I'm in the 6th row of the periodic table. But this is 2 behind, so this is going to be 4F, and there's 14 of them. So 4F, 14. After I'm done with the F's, I hit the D again. I go D, 1 through 10, and that's where I end up. I'm in the 5D, 10. Okay, so this is the electron configuration for Mercury. It's a good thing I didn't ask you to draw the arrows out for this one. What I'll ask you next is, though, to find out how many valence electrons. So this gets a little tricky, but what you have to do is just look for the biggest energy level. Energy levels are coefficients. So start backwards. Is 5 the biggest? Well, I've got 4 here. 5 is bigger than 4, so so far it's the biggest. But here's 6. 6 is bigger than the 4 or the 5. Nothing beats the 6. So 6 is my highest energy level. So I count the S's and the P's. Now, we didn't get to the six P's. There's only S's, so P is zero. There are no P's, so it's going to end up with just the two from the S. So there's going to be two valence electrons. Now, Mercury's got 80 total electrons. You look at the atomic number, that's protons. Protons equals electrons. If you have 80 positives, you're going to have 80 negatives. There's 80 electrons, but only two of them are going to be really important in the bonding game. So it's important that we do all this out so we can figure out how many there are um, and how many are going to be either given away or how many it's going to accept to complete the outermost energy level or how many it's going to share to complete the outermost energy level. So this is what you would do if I was asking you to do electron configuration. Run your finger through the periodic table and write the summary. Now if I ask you to do orbital diagrams, I won't be mean, I promise. I will not make you go all the way up to like an 80 element. Um, I'll usually ask you to do something probably no more than 20 or so. Let's do, actually let's do 20. Um, or you know what? Let me make a point here. Let's do chromium. Chromium is element 24. Let's go a little bit past uh, calcium here. So we've got chromium. Chromium's got 24 electrons, so I've got 24 people outside my theater looking for seats, or I've got 24 electrons looking for locations. So the first thing is we're going to write 1s. Put two electrons there. 24 is now down to 22. Then I write 2s, up and down. Now I'm down to 20. Then after 2s, I've got 2p. So I draw three lines. Even if I'm not going to fill them all, I draw my three lines, and I can put up, up, up. Remember Hun's rule? One in each before you double. There goes six, now I'm down to 14. Keep going, so where am I? I'm over here on the periodic table. I just finished 2P, now I hit 3S. So 3S, third energy level. It's got one up, one down. 14's now down to 12. Go across, I hit the 3P. Again, draw all three lines out. Up, 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 down, down, down. So now I'm down to six left. So I put 2 over here, now I'm in 4s, up, down, and then I hit 3d. So now I've got to draw all 5, even if I don't use them, I still have to draw all 5. So what I'm going to do is figure out how many electrons I need to put here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to do up, 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 and this is going to stay blank. None of them are going to be doubled up because I only need to put 4 there. If I was to count all my electrons, they would equal 24. They would equal the total number that I started with. If they don't, you did something wrong, so go back and figure it out. But they should add up and they should be equal. And it should end in what you predict based on its location in the periodic table. 3d4, over here, this is 3d4, so it should end there. The last point I'll make here is if I asked you how many valence electrons, you look for the biggest coefficient, biggest energy level. Yeah, we wrote this last, but the fourth energy level is bigger than the third energy level. So anyway, so if I asked you uh, how many valence electrons this would have, you'd look at the highest energy level, and you'd say two electrons. Okay? Add your S and your P. Granted, we don't have any P, so it's zero, but S's and P's add up together, and uh, we end up with two. So two valence electrons.